Adrian brought us. Oh, it's great when we're back here and we get a chance to have X-1 lead us off. Their newest uh, single, Return of the Night Mouse, gets us going here. Happy to have you back. Happy to have Adrian back with us today after a well-deserved uh, half day yesterday, spending with the family, graduation. Uh, you missed a good one, but I'll tell you this much. The boys uh, held the fourth down for you really well because not only was Alberto and Michael here, but UTEP Zay showed up yesterday. Yes, they were giving me the rundown. I'm so proud. I'm always proud of these guys. They did a great job yesterday. Uh, podcast sounded excellent. It's already uploaded, by the way. That's excellent as well. So special thanks to Alberto, Michael, and Zay holding it down. Great show yesterday. Rodney Lewis stepping down from Chape, and that's huge news for the local basketball community. It is a very, very big story. And uh, you, as you might imagine, um, you know he's a big friend of the program. He's been on with us a lot over the years. So for the fact that uh, he gave us 20 minutes yesterday on the phone and pretty candid conversation where he discussed everything from reasons for the decision to his relationship with Jim Forbes, his team, future plans, family, daughters. I mean, we pretty much covered it all yesterday with Rodney and was excited to have him on the show. You know, I was just really impressed uh, that he kept his composure throughout the whole interview. It was probably very emotional, Steve. You know, when I was listening to it, I was like, man, this is fresh off the news. Like, he knew that he was going to do this. He said that he was really thinking about this all the way back into early winter last year, like November period, and he decided to then step down at this time. So, interested to see who takes over that Chapin job. I think it's going to be huge. I feel like one of his assistants would do a great job for it. And so let's see what happens for that Chapin opening. Yeah, I can't wait to see what happens. I, I, and I can't wait to see the names. Or no, I guess we'll never know. But I'm so interested in the, the um, application pool for this job because this might be one of those positions where they don't just get a lot of great resumes from in town. They might get a lot of great resumes from out of town. Yeah, good point. I would think any coach who spent time in the 915 has some ties here who wants to try to come back could look for this job. I'd also anticipate some current head coaches going for this job, but man, I feel like he's built, so, and I'm talking about Rodney Lewis, had such a great supporting staff at Chapin uh, that Coach Castillo should get a real look. Some of those other guys on that staff should get a real look, and maybe that's the way that they go, knowing that this is in the summer, Steve. Yep. You know, you talk about timing-wise, not a great situation right here to try to turn around and hire somebody right here. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, I'll say this, though, more than anything, uh, when Rodney mentioned to us that this was a decision that he told his staff and his team back in November, I almost feel like a lot of people within the inner circle at Chapin have been prepared and bracing for this one for a while. No doubt. That's a good point as well. And now I'm also interested to see because they've got some great talent on that team, including Jaden Leverett, who'll be back, the sensational big man. He just recently picked up an offer from New Mexico, Oklahoma State. He obviously has the UTEP offer that's under his belt already and a Texas offer uh, from Rodney Terry, but that's one of the top prospects of this area, and I'm curious to see you know, who's going to be coaching him here in the future i am too i am too that is a great point to bring up so hey uh as far as the show goes today it's going to be a fun one it's going to be a good one in fact uh you look at our lineup today Corey heon's going to join us at 5 20 to talk stanley cup finals after another convincing victory by the florida panthers down 1-0 but they came back scored the empty netter ended up winning 4-1 and uh, they look like the best team right now they look like a team that might not allow Edmonton to even get a game off of them in this series and definitely something we'll talk about with Corey Heon at 5-20 Sean Merriman's going to join us at 6 he's got a lot of news to men- to talk about from the world of mixed martial arts and uh, looking forward to having uh, Sean back with us and then Tim Haggerty from Um, Albuquerque joining us at 615 where we get ready for uh, the Chihuahuas and the Isotopes game one of a six game set begins tonight. Michael you were following that Stanley Cup Finals game pretty closely here at the station when we left the show it was 1-0 Florida but like I I 1-0 Edmonton but like I talked about a moment ago the Panthers are tough they uh, really put the clamps down uh, defensively offensively just too much power for Edmonton this team just looks different. They look like a team built to, uh, to to win this Stanley Cup. 
You're exactly right. And I mean, I think the Oilers, they just could get nothing going offensively. And, you know, credit Stuart Skinner. You know, he held his own for the first two periods. He did what he could. And Edmonton was just not giving him any help, Steve. I mean, you look at the game yesterday through five minutes going into the second period. Edmonton didn't even eclipse over 10 shots on goal. That's not giving your goaltender help at all. And you need to help a guy like Stuart Skinner who can't hold it down against, you know, Florida's offensive firepower because they're eventually going to get going. I mean, a guy like Evan Rodriguez took advantage of that, you know, becoming the first player in Panthers franchise history to have a multi-goal game in the Stanley Cup. Yep, you're right. You're absolutely right. So, uh, Corey Heon, will talk more about that with us next hour on the show and uh, excited about that. Kay McConnell will be dropping by tomorrow. And uh, we've got guests lined up all week. In fact, just uh, putting the, the finishing touches on Thursday's show as well. We'll have members of Lo- Locomotive FC. We'll also have the opportunity to uh, have Russ Bradbird stop in and talk to us about basketball and the body coming up uh, this Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the uh, Armijo Center. So we'll do that as well. Just a lot going on here on uh, the show today and uh, excited about that. Uh, Had a chance to bring my son in earlier this morning. He was here early. He did card tricks for Buzz and the KLQ Morning Show during the commercial breaks. that's great. That's awesome. That was fun. He was all excited about that. And then he ventured over, did some on the other side of the building for some of the other people around. And, uh, yeah, before you know it, uh, he was uh, he was having a good time. He's polishing his act. He's getting that. He's you know he's getting his card tricks in order right now. He's got all summer with no school. So what are you going to do? Well, how about uh, you know work on your uh, you know other hobby as being a magician. I love the hobby. I love the fact that he's doing it in front of people. Now it's time to get him in front of a stage here in the future. Maybe back to school expo right around the corner. Yep. Ninety three point one Kiss FM. I'll just uh, throw that out there, Steve. No, you're right. That's uh, you never know. Might end up being something we uh, we have to look into. Uh, that could be uh, could be a possibility. So you know, it was funny too. Buzz was telling him, he goes, "Hey, you know, this would be a great way to get girls." And he's like, "You uh, you into girls?" And Joel's like smiling. He has that looks like, "No, not yet." I'm like, uh, and it was like one of those funny responses that uh, you know, Buzz is like, Buzz is already thinking ahead. He's like, "You know what? You know, girls love magic. You should uh, you should start thinking about that." He's trying to give him love advice. Wow, I love it, man. Yeah. I mean, from kids Buzz Adams even, himself. I know, but kids not even in seventh grade yet, and already Buzz is giving him advice, which is uh, crazy in itself. Um, the Joey Chestnut story is wild, just because, like, okay. How can I put this? If you are going to align yourself, because they say, like, he's chosen to represent another hot dog brand, right? And I was thinking, well, if he's not going to allow himself to represent Nathan's, then what would it be? Like, Hebrew National, Ballpark, one of those? No. He's representing... A plant-based hot dog called Impossible Foods. That shouldn't even matter. That's not even a real hot dog. That's plant-based. So, why? I mean, there's no way Joey Chestnut's gone vegetarian. I refuse to buy that. There is absolutely... The guy's eaten more hot dogs than anybody else in history. And yet, apparently, because he has agreed to a sponsorship deal... With the Impossible Foods, they are calling it a competing company to Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs. How is going with a plant-based hot dog? Like, I don't. Doesn't make any sense to me. Like, Impossible Burger is not a direct competitor to a meat patty. It's vegetarian. It's plant-based. How can they possibly say that a plant-based hot dog is a competitor to a beef hot dog? And they're taking the crown away. Nathan's themselves. You know, this is actually the real thing, Steve, is maybe we should all boycott Nathan's because, man, this is uh, Chestnut. He's the goat for this. Eight straight championships uh, that he has under his belt. A 16-time champion of the hot dog eating contest. Like, every 4th of July, we all look forward to watching him stuff his face uh, and, you know, enlarge his stomach in order to do this. But now we won't see this. I don't think this has anything to do with Nathan's. I think this has everything to do with Major League Eating, MLE, because Mm. they're the ones that run the contest. And from what I understand, they're the ones that have made the decision that Joey Chestnut is not able to compete 
at the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest because MLE runs it. And they're, they're the ones that had the statement, not Nathan's. It just said that, um, listen to this. Here was the quote. MLE and Nathan's went to great lengths in recent months to accommodate Joey and his management team, agreeing to the appearance fee and allowing Joey to compete in a rival unbranded hot dog eating contest on Labor Day. For nearly two decades, we have worked under the same basic hot dog exclusivity provisions. However, it seems that Joey and his managers have prioritized a new partnership with a different hot dog brand over our longtime relationship. So, I don't know. I mean, that is... MLE, Major League Eating, is the one that released the statement. And... But, I mean, it gets back to the same thing. How do you really call plant-based hot dogs a rivalry or, like, a, a competitor to a beef or pork hot dog? Like, that shouldn't even be an issue. Well, especially because most of these hot dogs that you're eating anyways are just kind of like chicken mashed up with like whatever, you know, right? I mean, it's not like it's exceptional stuff that you're eating unless you're eating some of the the more expensive stuff. But I'm just sad, Steve, that he's not going to be able to compete in one of the best uh, eating contests we have every single year. I'm not. You want to know why I'm not? Because remember, before Joey Chestnut, it was Kobayashi. And Kobayashi did the same thing. Okay, Kobayashi signed with a rival company, and then comes the emergence of Joey Chestnut. So before Chestnut, it was all about Kobayashi and his hot dogs. Now Chestnut's leaving, which means somebody else will step up and and have to win the yellow uh, mustard belt. And I'm fine with that. But I want to get back to the whole idea. Since when is a plant-based product a competitor of a meat product. Like, they should, it's, that, that has nothing to do with each other. You know, again, if it was another company like Hebrew National Hot Dogs or Ballpark Franks or one of these other beef hot dog companies or pork hot dog companies, I would say, yes, I completely understand it. It makes total sense. But who cares if he's with Impossible Hot Dogs? That shouldn't be in it. That should not be a, a competitor of, uh, of Nathan's. That makes, no t- that makes no sense to me whatsoever. It's not like the same people who are eating hot dogs are also eating these right here. No. No, it's exactly right. They're different lanes. Completely different lanes. One is beef or pork, and the other is plant. By the way, I don't know about you, but I've never had a plant-based hot dog. I've had a lot. You've had a lot of plant-based yes, hot dogs? Yeah, growing up in a family with a vegan. Yeah, definitely. Really? Uh-huh. You tell me. Does it taste the same to you? It tastes the same. Really? Honestly. Alberto, what do you think? Did it sound does it sound like it tastes the same to you or no? I'm sure it does. I've had uh, plant-based meat and it and it tasted the same, but I think that the premise is like they're competitors in the sense that they want you eating plant-based hot dogs, not the real ones. So if you switch over to one, you won't be eating consuming the other, so that's what makes it the sin that it is. You get me? No. It's like if you go and buy plant-based hot dogs, you won't be buying regular hot dogs. You're why can't buying. you? Why can't you just um, you know? To me, but plant- do both because I uh, yeah. think part of the plant-based appeal or part of like going to plant-based is you get away from the cruelty of the animal. So like if you start getting people on that train and they just start and like think about it, he just said they're the exact same. So it's like if they're the exact same and you take away. "Quote unquote," I'm throwing up air quotes. People can't see the cruelty and the bad part about it. Then it's gonna. Then that's what I think is a risk that people are are worried about. You I, see where it's like you won't have both. I am not a believer that 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 kind of stuff is any healthier than eating uh, than eating the meat. I feel like they put enough crap in the plant based stuff to make it just as unhealthy as they would eating a meat product. It's all the same. Look, if you want to eat plant based, I'm all for it, but don't try to fake the meat stuff. Just go regular, go salad, go vegetables, do all that stuff. If you're going to go plant, go plant. But if you want the beef, eat the beef. Don't go plant beef. That makes no sense to me. It's just it's imitation stuff. Come on. It's now, not that different, man. It's not that different. I'm just saying that. It, I mean. Like tofu is, is not that bad. I mean tofu. It's like sponge. It's. Fu- I mean, it depends it on it's which like ones it, you get. Yeah, I, it depends on which ones you get. I've, I've had some to, sponge eating kind of tofu before, but if you get some good ones, better. I went to a, a teppanyaki place. I'm not gonna say which one because there's a few in town, and um, somebody I was with ate the tofu, which, by the way, 
started like popping on the grill and like bouncing up and down. Like, what the heck is this thing? Yeah, I would never eat the teppanyaki style of tofu. And then I tried it and I felt like I was eating a sponge. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I would. Yeah, teppanyaki, that's where you got it wrong, man. You got to just get it boiled or get it fried, different I've had it different. In, I've had it in the soup. I've had the miso soup with the teppanyaki. Yeah, not a fan. You're not a fan? I said you're not a fan. Oh, I like the teppanyaki and the meat. I like the miso in the uh, in in the soup. That I'm okay with. That I'm fine with. Just didn't think the uh, didn't think the grilled uh, just didn't think the grilled um, uh, stuff with tofu was any good. You know, some places do a really good like black bean burger, and it's again it's imitation. It's supposed to be something so you're not eating just lettuce and avocado all in one burger right there. So I hear what you're saying. Just give you the veggie styles. There's also places instead of doing that, they'll just say here's a mushroom taco or a mushroom burger, and then do it that way. But yeah, to each his own. Have you ever seen the ingredients that go into these Impossible Burgers? Oh, like that's very true. No, that's very true. There's some that you actually should not eat. No, for sure. And there's others where if you eat a beef burger. It's beef. That's it. It's ground meat. Now, either 70, 75, 80, 85, 90%, whatever it is, lean, that's fine. But I'm just saying, it's usually it's one ingredient. Unless you doctor it up with breadcrumbs and different sauces and preparation on that as you make the patties. Put some chopped onions in there if you like that. But I just don't get it, man. Like, the impossible stuff, what I don't understand is, why is it so complicated? Why can't they just, if it's plant-based... Why can't they figure out a way to make it with, like, five ingredients? Why does it have to have 30 ingredients in it? That's I'm the other thing you. I understand. No, no, no. I'm with you completely. I'll give you a good list. I'll give you a good list of ones you could try. Fair enough. And by the way, mad props to your dad for doing that. I'm yeah. all for it. I Listen, if I was told tomorrow I can't eat meat anymore, I have to eat vegetarian, I'll be fine with it. I'll find enough things I can eat, eggplant, things like that, yeah. salad. Um, I'd be okay with it. But I'm just saying, man, to me – I think there's this idea that people say that, well, the impossible stuff is just like the real thing, which might be the case. But then when you start looking at the ingredients, you're thinking to yourself like, oh, my God, why are there why are there 90 ingredients into trying to make something taste like a burger? Yeah, there are some that are out there that are just basically fake. Like that's just you're, you're better off eating frozen food that, that costs like three or four dollars versus that right there. Yeah. All right. 20 passes. We get going here on Sports Talk anyway. The, the point of this story is this. Joey Chestnut's out. There will be a new champ. I hope Kobayashi comes back. How great would it be if Kobayashi makes this surprise return and wins the hot dog eating contest? He's got to be now probably in his 40s or 50s. That would be fantastic. So A whole new crown, though. Yes. That's, a, that's the point behind this. A new winner. 100%. Let's go to Charlie for traffic. We're back with more in a moment. Right here, 600 ESPN El Paso. Michael Plundo. Appreciate you, Michael. Thanks very much. Let's go to Orly. He's next up. Joins us here, 34 past. A, uh, our phone number, 505-6009. What's going on, Orly? Thanks for the call. What's happening, guys? Long time. Yeah, it has been, Orly. What's, uh, what, what have you been up to? Just been busy. That's that time of year. There you go. Uh, yeah, real quick, you know, before I get to the Chapin coach, what I think's going to happen, I hope it happens. Uh, you're talking about food and tofu. I have a real quick story. I dated a girl that made me a tofurkey. A tofurkey? A tofu turkey. Yeah, a tofu turkey. It was horrible. I called it tofurkey. It was so bad. I mean, I, you know, we, we men will do anything on a, with a girlfriend. You know how that is. Well, I turned told her I will try it. And I will never try to eat. I had a lot of weird foods, yeah. but I will not have tofu. I mean, I even told her I was going to enjoy pita. People enjoying tasty animals. Oh, my God. I, Listen to you. Uh, by the way, did that, did, just out of curiosity, huh? did the tofu turkey end the relationship? No. Me, me told her I, was, I, I, I could not be a vegetarian or vegan, whatever they want to call them. Little other things broke it up, and it was, you know what? We had a great time. She was a lot of fun. Just things didn't work out, and I just, I don't try to change me. I'm not, I, I, I'm going to eat meat. I like meat, like I said. I'm one of those people enjoying tasty animals, pita. Uh, it was, it was an experience, and I, I, I mean, I'll eat anything. I've had squab, I've had frog legs, I've had snails, but tofu is just something that, I even, I've tried plant-based foods, and I'm sorry, it does not taste like the real thing. Have you had uh, Rocky? Uh, have you had Rocky Mountain oysters? 
I have not had that yet. You don't have a lot of places in El Paso that sell them. Um, I've seen them I before. Think, I, I've seen them at Billy Cruz, I think. Okay. Well. That's one of the I have not had those yet. But you know what? I'll try anything once. I mean, people eat go. them all the time. Come around. I mean, the fact not, is, I'm if not, you. Yeah. Hey, real quick, I'm a coach from Chapin. What are the possibilities that he becomes the assistant coach at Utah? We have an opening. So um, I hate to break this to you, but the opening's been filled. They haven't uh, oh, announced okay. it. They haven't announced it officially yet, but they've had somebody now in place for the last couple of weeks. Oh, okay. I was hoping maybe he would do something with Utah. No. I mean, maybe you never know. Maybe he does a, you know, not not necessarily an assistant coaching role, but maybe another staff member for uh, for Joe Golding. Maybe that happens down the road for Rodney Lewis. But he's going to stay on maybe, as a as an yeah. instructor right now out at uh, Chapin. He would be great as an addition to UTEP uh, recruiting wise. He obviously has got these kids at Chapin playing well. He's got a couple of recruits at Chapin. It would be great for UTEP. But anyway, that was just I wondered that could be a, a possibility. I mean, never say never, but right now, no. I don't. I would think that before a college assistant job would ever come up for him, he would probably look at maybe taking another high school head coaching job, maybe in the DFW area in the Metroplex or a larger city in Texas, where he knows that you know he'll have an opportunity to coach high level athletes yearly. I think that probably would be the next step up if I'm Rodney Lewis. Or maybe you'll go to Texas University. You never know with Rodney. There you go. You never know. Yeah. You, you ne- never it's know. True. You, you never know. You never know. Anyway, guys, good talking to you. Appreciate you. Thanks for the call. Take care. Bye. All right. 38 past the hour as we continue here on Sports Talk. You know, not a bad thought as far as just the intention goes uh, for Rodney Lewis to maybe go into the college coaching ranks, uh, talking to UTEP Zay back here. I would think that maybe he would go for, like you were saying, maybe another head coaching job at the high school level outside of Texas maybe, maybe even explores a different state. Um, He's coached in the state of Arizona in the past, as Zay was just telling me. So there's a lot of opportunities, I think, for him Um, and different options. I think he'll be a highly coveted coach, you know, wherever he goes. I agree with you. Uh, from his original topic, has any of you ever tried Tafurki? No, that's hilarious. I didn't even know that existed. Think your dad's ever tried no, it? No, I, I can guarantee you he does. He would probably tell you. He he agrees with more with you. Like He doesn't like the imitation as much. Um, but he does like the Asian interpretations of like tofu, like steamed tofu, um, you know, sesame tofu, those kinds of things. Yeah. I always feel like, well, Asian flair with tofu is kind of what it's made for, and I feel like they do it better than anybody else. Definitely. I agree with that. So, um, Alberto, do you know what Rocky Mountain oysters are? Yes, I do. Don't but say I, it. Uh, Michael Plundo, do you know what Rocky Mountain oysters are? I do. Okay, good. Well, at least you guys all know. Apparently Orly does too. He said he just hadn't, he wouldn't, you know, hasn't tried them yet. So doesn't uh, that doesn't sound too appealing, does it, guys? I mean, I'd try them at least once. Have you tried oysters, like fr- uh, raw yeah. oysters? Yeah, yeah. My dad got me in on oysters when I was young. Oh, so you're, you 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 dig, dig oysters? Oyster guy, yeah. Okay, raw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I, I'm not doing these. Adrian, you haven't tried an oyster? Uh, Rocky Mountain oysters? No. You didn't know what it was, did you? I didn't until I just googled it right now. <laughs> <laughs> will you do? Will you do raw oysters? Oh yeah, definitely. okay, yeah. Well, all right, Michael, you uh, you into the oyster thing? I would too, and I actually haven't tried oysters, so I think it's something that uh, needs to happen here. Would you rather try a ro- uh, Rocky Mountain oyster or a raw oyster if you had the choice? Uh, I'd probably start out with a raw oyster, to yeah, be honest. That might be a safer bet. Yeah, I get you. All right, twenty front of five. As we continue here on Sports Talk, 505-6009, that's our telephone number. Stay with us. More in a moment, 600 ESPN El Paso. 49 past the hour as we continue here on Sports Talk, 505-6009, our telephone number. This comes from Box Score Boy. Have the Bravos made any moves to improve the roster? Alberto, any thoughts? Um, I hate to break it to um, our good friend there, but unfortunately not. You know, the Bravos have been uh, relatively inactive on um, in the off season. The thing that the, the, the player that they've gotten closest to is Rodrigo Aguirre. This is reported just a few hours ago. You know, the the, the Charrua from uh, Monterrey is more than likely going to 
come to the to the borderland for a three at a three million dollar sale so and a three mil, and a three year contract so that's the only guy uh, a guy from Monterrey named Rodrigo Aguirre that's the only addition that they've like been seriously connected to they've had other rumors but nothing has come of them they know they were connected to Luca Martinez Dubai and he's not going to come and, and that's disappointing I know that they were also linked to the return of Carlos Salcedo a defender from uh, the Na- Mexican national team he was here a couple seasons ago he returns to Cruz Azul there was a rumor that he might return to Juarez unfortunately though he looks he's now been linked to Brazilian f- soccer so he won't come so yeah I mean unfortunately not many additions that that, that can get anybody really excited this season well hopefully um, you know they sometimes I feel like when you bring all the flash and the big names and you, and you disappoint it makes things even worse. Maybe they've got a bunch of guys that'll fly under the radar, and uh, they'll surprise some people. And you don't necessarily need the big splash signings to uh, to get dubs. Yeah, and you know what? They have a great base. Their U twenty three team. They had a, a postseason run, unlike their their oldest team. So that that kind of young that foundation is where they're they're more than likely gambling on. They were tied to other names. You know, they were tied to guys from South America. Ramon Sosa from Talleres. He's, he's a Paraguayan who's playing in Argentina. He's playing in Talleres, and and even he was linked to here and it, it just kind of fell through but you're definitely right it's kind of better to just ride with the guys you have improve that that base you know they have Aitor Garcia he did phenomenal for him he's coming from Spain he's an older guy he doesn't play the whole game a lot of the time but I think that what he brings along with the young guys it's 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 it just should make for an exciting year I just hope they play well at home I really do that's what they need to do that's so, that's where they struggle you're right I mean there's nothing like being at home Ask Paulo Verde Holmes and uh, Edgar Montiel for that. 17 years he's been open in El Paso, folks. And over the years, how about 2,300 homes delivered to families here in El Paso? So many reasons why Paulo Verde has been successful. Uh, 23 of their staff right in, uh, in their office. Five engineering and three architecture degrees as well. Plus, uh, Adrian, year after year, Paulo Verde voted as the best uh, builder by City Magazine and the Times, Builder of the Year. That's right, and they were also second place for multiple years in the El Paso Inc., but eight-time Builder of the Year by the City Magazine and El Paso Times. That's awesome stuff. And one of the reasons why people vote them uh, for these prestigious awards is because they are identified as an energy star industry leader by the EPA. They've built 100% of their homes energy star certified. Uh, Check it out yourselves. They've got great online reviews, paloverdehome.com. That's paloverdehome.com. Com for all their online reviews. I saw a moment ago that um, Christian McCaffrey will be on the cover of Madden 25 this year. This is the first time in 25 years that a 49er has been on the Madden game. So this is a big deal because the last time this happened, I was trying to think about it. Garrison Hurst, 1999 when he was on Madden 99, released in 98. And that's a a name that hasn't been heard in a while. So he was the former uh, comeback player of the year in Garrison Hurst. So you think about it, the last time we've had a running back on the cover of Madden, Adrian Peterson for the 25th anniversary back in 2013. Guys, thoughts on Christian McCaffrey being the new Madden cover boy this year. Yeah, well, I mean, the window of opportunity is now. He signed the guaranteed extension with uh, the 49ers, so if you're ever going to make him uh, a cover boy, it's this year. I'd always be skeptical, though. I mean, they've said it in the past. The Madden cover has a bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of bad luck to it. So don't want to curse you too much, 49er fans, but I don't necessarily say this is a good thing. All I know is this. The rumor was that Joe Burrow was going to be on the cover. He's probably breathing a sigh of relief because of all the injuries he's been dealing with, the last thing he needs to worry about is the Madden cover jinx this year. Yeah, I saw Joe Burrow possibly. I saw even Aaron Donald uh, re- recently retired from the Rams. Um, that He probably would have been the best one because, I mean, obviously he's retired. He doesn't need to obviously go on uh, any kind of conspiracy side of things. So he could have been a safe bet. But, yeah, instead they go Christian McCaffrey. I think it's a good cover what was the last time they went with a retired football player on the uh, cover you know sometimes i was talking to alberto about this they do milestone years they do uh you know mem- uh, memorial years or stuff like that so yeah they do this from time to time i think i know the answer to that one i'm correct me if i'm wrong i don't remember what year it was released but one time madden released a, a madden 25 and on the cover was barry sanders 
That was really? like, that was about nine. Well, if it was Madden twenty five, then you're but, probably talking about uh, what twelve, uh, you know, eleven, twelve years ago. Yeah, and he, it was Barry Sanders on the front. I still know. think the Madden with Madden on the cover, the one they did a couple of years ago, the Madden edition, that's been my favorite. Yeah, that was two years ago, 2023. Excellent tribute to uh, John Madden himself. So I love that one. My son has it, and it's cool because there's game playing modes where you see like the vintage Madden from the uh, 60s and 70s as cool. the coach on the game, which is really sweet. Yeah, I like those. I like the commemorative ones. Uh, those are always, uh, they tug on your heartstrings for sure. Uh, the Rob Gronkowski in 2017, I don't know if he was still in the league at that point. I, I'm assuming he was, but the one that, um, you know, that Alberto was referencing right there the Barry Sanders one yeah. that came out 2014 when okay. he was on the cover 10 years ago all right one down we've got 90 minutes to go stay with us busy five o'clock hour right here 600 ESPN El Paso Rio. here's Steve Kaplowitz and Adrian brought us all right start of hour two here on the program welcome back everybody Michael Plundo UTEP Zay Alberto Dueta oh we got a great hour in fact the one and only Corey Heon is going to be stopping by our 600 ESPN El Paso River Oaks property schoolyard sports studios. Excited to get his thoughts talking pucks. But before we do that, let's welcome in Gator Richard to the show. He'll lead off our two here on the phones, 505-6009. What's going on, Richard? How about them Gators? How about them? Yeah, you see what they're doing in the baseball, right? They... I, I have. You pretty excited about that? Well, you know, any time the Gators are going against A and M, we got to put some kind of friendly wager on it, right? Why? I, I don't like A and M. What do you uh, uh, What do you want to wager that for? I was I went to uh, Texas, okay. not A and M. Okay, never mind. Never mind. There you I, go. I guess there you go. learned your lesson from the last time. Oh my! God. We won the last time, right? <laughs> yeah. By the way, when are we? Uh, when are you taking us to lunch to pay off that bet? Hey, that that's up to you and Adrian. I'm ready. Adrian, when are we going to do that? That'll be another. Yeah, we'll do it in the coming weeks. We're, we've got some time on our hands, right? We, we need to roll off yeah. of the. Uh, he's off for the summer. We need to hey, get we that got, going. Hey, we got a couple extra people on the show, though, Gator. Richard, you prepared to pay for Alberto, Michael Plundo, Zay, Cade? Oh no, they, no, that one guy didn't appreciate my uh, Peter Piper, you know, scenario. He, I guess he didn't think that was worthy. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, true. So, I mean, it is what it is. But. I uh, I think the Gators going to whoop up on Texas A and M next, and uh, continue on in this College World Series. I hope so. I think that would be great. Didn't uh, didn't Wide Langford of the Rangers play at uh, Florida? Langford. Yeah, White. What Langford? year is that? Was that last year? Or am I wrong? Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought he, he played. I thought he was with the Gators. No, he's an outfielder. Mm. Maybe I'm I, wrong. I Maybe know. I'm wrong on that. I thought Wyatt Langford played uh, played for well, the Gators. You, you saw what that that uh, that Gator uh, Jay, yeah, he Jay did. Allen. He did Cre- play with Creepy. the Gators. Hey, he was the fourth overall pick last year, and you had no idea who he is. How is that even possible? I mean, the guys well, the guys with the Rangers right now, and he hardly played any minor league ball. He was one of the best players in the country last year, and you've never heard of him. Uh I'll tell you what, Steve, you know, between the, the Gator quarterbacks that always go first round yeah. and, uh, yeah. Yeah, you great know, excuses. It, yeah. it, it's hard yeah. to keep track of yeah, where all these Gators, successful Gators end up. It's but, tough. But uh, I, I think the Gators are going to have a good showing for this College World Series. And uh, as so. far as eating hot dogs, yeah, I, I, I think somebody's going to, like, come to their senses and, and let Joey – Go in there and decimate the uh, competition again. Somebody will come to their sense. They're still a month out. Or I hope so. A little less. That would be that would be good. You ever had a um, you ever had a plant based hot dog? Uh, yeah. You know what the the guy at uh, Burger King gave me a, one of those like I don't, I don't even know what the hell they're called, but it was a plant based burger. Yeah. What do you think about and, that? Uh, the Impossible yeah, Whopper. I I, yeah. I took it back and walked inside. You know from Took a bite of it, turned around, went back, and uh, I said, hey, man, what, what in the heck is this? Yeah. Oh, you know, most people can't tell the difference. I said, yeah, maybe so, but, you know, I didn't order this. You know what I mean? So they're trying, I guess, to, 
I don't Somebody know. Somebody trying to pull to a fast one. one on you and sneak a plant-based burger on your regular meat burger? It's because my, my daughter caught it. She's like, Dad, why is that, like, you know, because it had, like, a, a different wrap, different wrap uh, wrapping paper around yeah. the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, maybe they're just trying to, like, uh, get rid of them or something. Maybe. I don't know. Good job, Richard. Appreciate the phone call today. Thanks for getting in. Interesting, as always, when Gator Richard calls into the show. Um, all right. Corey Heon is with us right now. We're going to talk uh, some pucks as uh, the Stanley Cup Finals, two games in. Here is a guy that uh, I've known for, what, 25-plus years, came to El Paso as a buzzard. Now he's a longtime resident. Uh, He's very involved uh, with youth hockey, with the Rhinos. He still skates. He's got a daughter who's one of the best players uh, in terms of what she's able to uh, to do playing for the uh, the Mexican national team, and she's going to be a superstar herself. Um, and he's been kind enough to drop by our studios and, and talk to us here on the program. First off, it's uh, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here, and uh, how you holding up? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for the introduction. It's a little little much, but. Well, I mean, you've you've done all that. Well, I mean, yeah, think about that. You know, it's, it's 20, impressive. It's been twenty five years, man. What year did you get here? September of nine or yeah, ninety seven. All right, so got I've known the, you... I got off the airplane. Yeah, with a warm shirt, jeans, wool socks, in early September. I got laughed at in the airport, including by Brent Scott, our captain. Really, a little overdressed. Wasn't prepared for the heat. Oh no, I can imagine. Wool socks too. Yeah, That's, man, it's cold and cold in Canada in September. It is, and then you come here and you you never left. You never went back. No, you know I I stayed here. You know I played a couple of years, retired, too many concussions, got married, got involved with the youth program and the Rhinos, and here we are, man. I love that. Good for you. Um, it's amazing, but that's almost 27 years now. Yeah. That's, a, that's a really good run. So you've essentially, um, you know, you've spent more than half your life in El Paso. That's big. Love El Paso, man. It's, you know, you can't beat the weather except this time of year because it's flipping hot. Yes, it is. But, other, you know, luckily I work in a rink, so it's, it's fairly, you know, during the day it's not so bad. But, you know, it's, it's been good. El Paso's been great to me. You know, just the, the warmness of the, the, the people, the food, everything about it. I love it here, man. By the way, congratulations! You started a podcast. Yes. How much? Uh, how much fun has that been for you? <laughs> you know, you you know me a little bit more than others, Steve. Mm-hmm. You know, you know my personality, and you I you know, do. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. You know, we have fun with it. Obviously, you got to watch what I say, and at times that that can be uh, that do can you, be tough. Do you really? have I mean, it's a podcast. You can say whatever you, you want. You know, but with with my position with the rhinos, I got to oh, be careful, right? Yeah, so that, that's a good point. You know, that's and we it's it's a lot of fun. We had this. You know, we recorded on Tuesday. We had, um, or the, yeah, we recorded today, but we had a guest on come in on Sunday to record. Stephanie Hahn was on. Oh, fantastic! And she is fantastic, isn't she? Man, is she intimidating? Like yeah. just a just a intense human being. Oh yeah, it's so wonderful. Like her whole family, man. And you know, she was on. We we had some good stuff. So stay tuned to that one because I think I might have got myself in a little bit of trouble. Oh no! Did you? Yeah, man. Um, I said that I could take her. Oh God. And in the ring, well, wherever I think I have the advantage, which would Maybe be on the ice, ice but no, she's could she skate? I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. But anyway, so yeah. there's something coming up, and I think uh, I'm gonna. I don't know. We'll see. We'll All see right. what's coming. Well, she's got a fight coming up, July 27th. 27th, She'll be fighting at the Coliseum as part of Ring Wars 12, yep. and a title fight for her too. So I'm excited about that. She gets a chance to try to win a belt, uh, just like her older sister Jennifer. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're right. Uh, between them, Heather, AB, it is a it's such yeah. a great family. The Hans are amazing. Yeah, they are. You know, we had we had uh, Jennifer on probably about a month and a half, two months ago, when we first started the podcast. And just the, the kindness of that individual. She's super kind and spoke so highly of everybody in her family. And just it's just an amazing support group that they have. And it's no wonder why they're all successful. What made you decide that you wanted to start a podcast? Well, you know, I've, I've been on the radio before. I've talked, and I enjoy talking and BSing. And, yeah. you know, Herb and I talked about doing a podcast three or four years ago. And our bus driver at the time, Troy Regeer, big retired Special Forces, military, long beard, and the guy's like MacGyver. And he's like, why don't we start a podcast and we do it on the road? I'm like, well, that's probably not a good idea since you're driving. So, but we, we you know, Herm and I talked about it and we finally in, in about September, October, we're like, are we going to do this or we're not? And then come January, we're like, well, who's going to host it? Well, I can 
talk. Yeah. I can BS. I can do whatever. So here we are. Nice. And then you have all the equipment. So have guys- all the equipment. You know, we we got a good production team for what we're doing. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of fun. We talk with hockey for the first part, and then we bring, try to bring on a special guest for the second. And, you know, it's been great. We had, we had Lane Frank on. Nice. Intelligent young man. Oh, we love Lane. Well-spoken Lane. man. Oh, yeah. He's, his future is is bright. It is. In fact, uh, Lane... Uh, Lane always seems to predict what's going to happen before it happens. It's hard to explain, but like the the whole idea of of Dan Hurley to the Lakers, which didn't happen, but ultimately could have happened, he mentioned months ago, and I told him he was nuts. And sure enough, the Lakers went after him. They threw seventy million at him, and and uh, Hurley said no and decided he wanted to stay at UConn. Good for him, man. You know he's he's doing something right. Good research, good whatever, but he's he's going to be a good one. Somebody told you, I'll, I'll pay you six years, I'll pay you $70 million. I'd be out the door before I could even <laughs> sign it. <laughs> you know, exactly. so, sorry, Herm, but if KLAQ has said, hey, come on over, I'm leaving. That's right. If I mean, the money's there. I'll tell you something, if KLAQ ever offered that kind of money to you, I'm leaving because I'll be like, that's <laughs> the most amazing thing I've ever heard. Right. You never but, know, though. But Anything KLAQ. Possible. Yeah, here we go. That's right. Um, I can be your sidekick. Well, what about Adrian? You could be know, Adrian's. But, you know, maybe it'll be Adrian's sidekick. I might. Not, Adrian's, I Adrian's I much, a good dude. You know, I don't know how many more years I'm long for this job. I've been doing this a long time, and I'm kind of I'm, I'm winding things down here, Corey. It's been a great run. You've been doing this a long time, man. Long time. You know, Started, I remember back yes. in the day when you were with the Buzzards, helping us out there and being involved with that. And then you were you were a star softball pitcher on our. Remember that? It was fun. When you were a pitcher, I enjoyed that. That actually. was a good time. That was a very good time. Well, we were the Ice Dogs. So we were good. Cappy was our pitcher. Yeah, good story. Was, oh, we need to hear more of this. Well, there was, there was. <laughs> Hang on one second. Go ahead, Alberto. We need stats. I hit the ball well. I mean, he pitched. Just... He was our pitcher because all I could do is I couldn't pitch. I could hit a little bit, throw, but it was it was more of an entertaining type thing because teams that we played were like, are you guys kidding me? Because we'd chirp each other mm-hmm. when guys would get out or hit pop ups or whatever, and we would chirp everybody on our own team. And they're like, what are you guys doing? I'm like, oh, this this right. is us. We're just having fun. We're not, here to, we're not here to win. That was 2002. I was having a blast in those years. That was years. a good time. Yeah. We talked about doing it again, but nobody really wants to drive to the sports park. It's a, well, that's because we're all West Siders. Yeah. It's a tough drive. Good time, though. In fact, but, you, but here's the thing. If you could play by going to the sports park, you still have to go, you have to, go to the rink every day. But thanks to 375, that is such an easy drive from the West Side of town. It is. You know, it takes me literally about 10 minutes to get to work any time of day. It, it doesn't really matter. And... Uh, you know, when I work in something that I love, you know, it doesn't feel like work like you guys, right? Yeah, you're here, you're punching in, punching out. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're doing what you want, doing what you love. Exactly. It doesn't uh, feel like it. And, you know, it's a long season. We play <clears throat> between both teams. Shoot, we probably play 100 games. And, you know, that's home and away. And we 50 at home. And it's because we have two teams. It's almost every other weekend. And so from September through April, early May, it's almost every weekend. Is it amazing to just sit back and think about what you guys have built over the last 10 plus years? You know, it's for for sure. You know, when we when we started, you know, Corey Herman has done a great job with with what he's done and and you know, when I was working for the Coliseum as with the Sports Commission, he ran the youth program there and he kind of just wanted to start his own thing with the youth with the hockey and with the youth and he did and and just worked out and he, we moved it over to the event center from the Coliseum. Yep. And just kind of from there, just, you know, I would have never thought it would be what it is today, you know. And we had the one team, now we have two. So when COVID hit, I'll never forget it. We were going to win our third in a row. I truly believe that, our Thorn Cut Championship. We, I, I believe we are going to win that third. Playoffs were starting. And obviously the rumors are going around about this, whatever the COVID thing was at the time, right? And we were playing Dallas. Dallas was on their way here, and he was about three hours away. And their coach called me. He's like, hey, man, we're told we're done. We're, we're turning around. I'm like, what are you talking about? So we, I hadn't, haven't been informed yet. Mm-hmm. So no, no sooner did we hang up, Lee calls and say, hey, we're done. We're suspending the season. It's it. And so, you know, there was some hard conversations with Herm and I and, and Tom Herman at the time. You know, what are we going to do? Are we going to go dormant because the WSHL was going to go dormant for a year? Or are we going to start, join U, USA Hockey again and join the, the NA3? But actually join the NA because we wanted to take a step up. Mm-hmm. So... We talked about doing that, and you know, we, either we're going to sink or swim. We couldn't afford to go dormant for a season because you, you would just leave, lose all the momentum. We thought that, so we switched over to the NA, and they said, "Do you guys want an NA three, you know, franchise as well?" So we're like, "Sure, we'll figure it out." 
So we, we delayed the NA for a season, mm-hmm. and we started the NA3, and here we are with two teams. And then you win Craft Hockeyville in the process. Craft Hockeyville in the process. That was, you know, the, the support that we got locally, and not even locally, everywhere, uh, to help us get that was just truly amazing. What an experience. And what the, the best part about it was the fact that we were hands-on. You know, part of it with, with rebuilding the ice, learning the ice, mm-hmm. doing all that good stuff, it was part of the program where they educate you. And they don't just come in and make themselves do it. They're like, hey, where's your staff? We want you involved. We want you to build all that good stuff. And shoot, man, we learned so much. We built so many relationships. You know, Herm, Herm goes on the road now, and he works with the NHL doing the outdoor games. It's amazing. He's become mm. an ice consultant. Yeah. He's Fantastic. the ice meister. He, he is. You know? We chirp him all the time. Hey, man, the ice is soft. It's not so good today. And he takes it to heart. You know, like it's, it's pretty funny. So, Herm, if you're wow. listening, yeah, I'm just letting the cat out, bud. If it makes you feel better, Rich Sturm used to feel the same yeah. way when people would chirp at him all well, the years. Well, his ice was bad, ice. though. Yeah, well, dead it was. That's true. <laughs> you figure after all the years he spent Cincinnati and he's still there now, he would have learned something. I think he's still there. He is. Northland's rink. What a, what a great guy. And, and, you know, um, just when he was... When the buzzers were around, he was the ice meister there, and yeah. he did a good job. I'm he, only messing. He did, although he used to bother me because when I would try to call goals with the buzzards, he would always scream before I could ever say score, so it, it drove me nuts a couple times. I had to try to mute him just so that <laughs> way I would make sure I could actually call a goal. That's so, funny. you know. All right, uh, speaking of hockey and you being here, Stanley Cup Finals, two games in. When we come back, let's talk about the Panthers-Oilers series, and we'll get your thoughts on if Edmonton can win a game as they head back over to, to yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Canada for games three and four. We'll do that in a moment. Corey Heon with us from uh, El Paso Rhinos Hockey. Uh, as we continue, let's go to Charlie One and get this traffic update. you with uh, Corey Heon, general manager. Still uh, El Paso Rhinos. Is that what you are? Still GM? I think I'm the president now, but Even whatever better. it is, what it is. Oh, that's good. We Presidents. all wear many hats, man. You know, it's just as long as the job gets done. Well, if you're president, what's Corey Herman? What is he, CEO? CEO. Whatever's That's above it. president. I don't know. I mean. He signs the checks. Normally, That's what he is. Normally, president is the, uh, is the top, uh, but uh, I like the fact that uh, the two of you, you know, you guys were former roommates. People don't realize this, but uh, you roomed together with the buzzards. You guys were close, uh, tight, both from Canada. And, uh, again, you know, you bring back a, a lot of good memories talking about those teams. And, and um, for you, an opportunity to, to win that championship in your first year here, the second uh, back-to-back title for the uh, Buzzards, that was a big deal. It was. You know, so when I came down in 97, it was just it was a very, very much a culture shock. You know, it was coming from Canada green, you know, 70, 80-degree weather to what we are in now. Um, but it was great, man. And, you know, Herman and I have gone back, shoots probably since we've been 16 years old. And, you know, I was in Waters for 11 years as a plant manager doing the Rhinos as a part-time gig when, when we first started. And as you know, I used to call the games. And I was a little borderline on some of the things that I would say. You know, like I would tend to cross a line type thing. Yeah, I don't care. Right? Yeah, never, never. So <clears throat> it was a Saturday. He's like, hey, man, you need to come see me before the game. I was like, shoot, what did I say on Friday night? Because we used to have a couple of drinks doing it. So I come in, and he sits me down. He's like, hey, what do you think about coming on full-time? I was like, wow, man, I thought I was in trouble. You know what I mean? So, you know, we went back and forth for a couple of months. Not, nothing to do financially, nothing to do with money, nothing to do with anything except friendship. Because I'm a big believer, like, you, you got to be very mature if you're working with your best friend. If things don't work out, you know, it's business. And obviously, I've been in the game a long time, and business is what it is. So... We both agreed that if it didn't work out for whatever reason, our yep. friendship must remain intact. That's great. By so. the way, you also spent years working in Wattis. Yeah, I spent 11 years over there as a plant manager. Loved it. Loved the culture. Loved the people. Some of the best people I've ever worked with in my entire life. I miss it. Truly, truly, truly miss it. I believe it. Uh, Kate McConnell has stopped by. Apparently, uh, you got done a little early, so you have an opportunity to spend the last hour with us here today. That's right. We're on a little bit of a new schedule right now, so the meeting times might get moved around, but I'm going to be in here, obviously, as much as I can. So as soon as we got out at 5 o'clock today, I was like, all right, I got to head over there as soon as I can. And you know Heo from the opportunity that the, the two of you had a chance to talk to him at the district when he was in. In fact, I had COVID that night. I remember How it like it was COVID yesterday. How do you have COVID when COVID was done two years ago? I thought it was, too. You just needed some time off. You know what was interesting about this second bout of COVID? 
I had allergies. That, that's all I had. I thought it was just yeah. basically like you know I couldn't I couldn't beat the, uh, the the congestion, the coughing a little bit. I thought it was just you know like just regular things. I took the test just to see, <laughs> and sure enough, positive. And I think I was supposed to be that night with Adrian and and you, Kate, at the district. And yep. I said, hey, listen, can't make it, guys. I'm uh, I'm I've got COVID. I'm going to stay home. Give uh, Heo my best and uh, regards, and, and we'll go from there. We had a great time it that was. night, so I'm sorry you missed out on it. But also, Me too. Not only do I know Corey from that night, but I also went on his podcast, which is Crash Course, right? It's yes, called, sir, yeah. Cr- uh, give me the name of it again. Crash Course Hockey Podcast. Crash Course Hockey Podcast. I got to go on that with him. Nice. We did an episode together, and it was awesome. Yeah. Super cool setup. Inspired me a lot to start thinking about some things. Maybe. You know, we got a lot of positive feedback with just how well-spoken you were. I'm not saying that because you're sitting here and you're bigger than me. <laughs> but you know you you're just extremely well spoken and intelligent young man. So I know you want to get into this. You're, you're going to be good, man. I appreciate that. And, and like then you I had said, some of your boys come to the game. Yeah, yeah, we had some of the guys come to the game. They loved it. By the way, they thought it was the coolest thing ever. I mean, you know, people that haven't gone to a hockey game in a long time or ever, you know, sometimes you forget or sometimes you maybe don't know because you've never been how fun hockey is right. to watch. And here's the thing: you could know nothing about the sport. Like, yes, I know hockey, but do I know it like I know football? Of course not. Sure. You don't need to know hockey well to go have a good time at one of those games. Yeah, no, it's definitely a fun sport to watch. Plus, you get the ride in the razor. That's that right. That, oh, that was awesome. That was. I awesome. heard about that. That's the highlight of my night every night. Yeah, you love you love the razor. Yeah, man. I believe. It. Oh, who wouldn't love that on the ice? That's yeah. The go best on the thing ice ever. and get to rip around and yeah. shoot some t-shirts over and get some cool people in to to do the thing. The control yeah. on the razor was so impressive to me. I mean, you just start sliding, but you're, the accuracy that you have on that thing is crazy. It's not always like that. Oh, you know, like I got a good night. You got a good night, but it and I I stride for that, right? Just as we come off when we do the last spin, it's I want to just kind of continue to go, but it's not always like that. It's hard. It's not. It's not easy. That's for sure. Did you also used to drive the Zamboni? Yeah, we we do everything, man. Well, you know, no. I mean, um, you, you're like the jack of all trades. Zamboni, we've done Z- like janitor Zamboni. We do everything. You've done it all. Is what yeah. you're telling. So me. when somebody comes in and says, "No, I'm not going to do that," I'm like, "Then leave." That's because right. nobody's too big or too small to do any type of job in this facility. By the way, is the ice right now, if you compare it to the ice when you played at the Buzzards, it's night and oh, it's day night different, and day. isn't it? And I'm not saying this just because it's the Rhinos or El Paso, but we have the best ice in the league by far. You can ask any player that comes in. You can ask any team that comes in. Herm does an excellent job maintaining that ice. You know, we got a new Zamboni, new plant. It's insulated now. It's just it's incredible, and he works at it daily so are the guys so are the maintenance crew too so how big of a difference does that make for huge players huge like so you take for instance <clears throat> our ice compared to shreveport's when we're in the playoffs like when you're passing the puck it would be like this on on the tabletop nice and smooth nothing you know moving around yeah. you go to shreveport and again it's it's nothing to do against or bad against shreveport it's just their humidity they don't have the capabilities as we do and it's it's rough it's soft ice is bumpy gets chewed up it's wet you know, pucks get stuck and stopped. and Big I've difference. Heard, I've heard you have essentially NHL caliber ice right well, yeah, now. Yeah, you know, when, when they came down, it had to be. There, there was a whole story behind that, too, because there was a point in time where if we couldn't get the chiller down to a certain temperature, they were canceling it. Mm. So <clears throat> that's a true story. So I think it was two nights. Well, yeah, two nights before the actual game, we were still building ice. And I had to run to Rio Doso to get some glycol. And it was just a matter of going and coming back, and we're putting it in overnight. And they said if if we can't get the temperature down to what it needs to be by the time eight o'clock in the morning rolls around, we're done. That had to wow. be scary. Oh my god, <laughs> there's a lot riding on that. You know what I mean? And and we yeah. got it. So just from from working with the NHL and and doing all that sorts of things and the knowledge that they they give us and and they still consult with us. And Herm's Herm's amazing with the ice. That's fantastic. And we chirp him all the time because we we tell him otherwise, but. It's, it's, it's amazing. Awesome. It's amazing, guys. <clears throat> All right. More with uh, Corey Heon as we continue. If you want to weigh into the show, 505-6009, we will talk Stanley Cup Finals. Next, right after Michael Plundo and this Sports Center update. Bench by Calvin Pickard. So do you think maybe in the offseason that Edmonton may target a goaltender like UC Soros, probably? They need to do something. You know, you know, it's great to make the playoffs. It's great to advance in the in the playoffs. But you need to win. You know, you, nobody wants to to get in second place is like kissing your sister. Nobody wants that, right? So for, on my opinion, for Edmonton to win, they need to get a net minor, and Soros could be the guy. 
By the way, the guys love the kissing your sister line. You threw that out there. Well, I'm Alberto, sorry. You know how Alberto's, I am. You know how I am, Cappy. You know. I know. Alberto, you like that one? You're going to use that next time? I just, yeah, I wasn't ready. You weren't ready? Sorry, man. Guard. It, just, it was funny. That was good. It yeah. threw me right back to junior college because that was my <laughs> junior college coach's just line right there. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's... I'll say this, though. Think uh, about it. It just doesn't count. You know, <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, again, the funny thing is you watch the game this year, right, and you see what happened, and you see the, the Rangers in their season, and Dallas had a great run, too. But Edmonton's they're a fun team. If I were the Oilers, here's what I would do for game three. I'd bring out Gretzky, Messier, <laughs> Curry, Fuhrer, um, I, I, all of them. I bring out the I bring out the glory team. Have them on the ice before mm. the game. Get the fans revved up. Bring the aura back a little bit, and just make it where all of a sudden you got the legends there now, and hopefully the team plays well. You know, they, they obviously go, going down or being down to going in your own building. There needs to be some sort of spark. You know, there's you you lose the next one, it's pretty tough. It's yeah. tough as it is right now playing against Florida. Like I truly thought the Rangers should have got through. I really do. They were the better. Honestly, they they're the, probably the best team in in hockey right now, and for them to lose, it's oh, yeah. very surprising because they had everything. Um, and you know, it's, they need Edmonton does need to do something. They really, really do. What it, whatever it is, bringing Messi there would be a great thing because he's the all time. You know, everybody says he's Mister Captain. You know, Mister mm-hmm. Hockey was a great leader when he played. Yep, he played for the Rangers too. That's he did. But Gretzky, Gretzky's obviously a legend in his own right. You know, like there's nobody bigger in hockey than him. Get him down there. Have him warm up and just say, hey, fellas, this is how you do it. Let's go. Wouldn't that be great? Do a little pep talk and then have them on the ice before the game just to get the fans pumped up and bring those legends back. And all of a sudden the fans are even more hyped up than they would normally be. It's going to be tough. It really, really is. I I truly don't think Edmonton has it just because you, you, you can see it when they get scored on. You really, really can. It's just like, here we go. Here we go again. Yeah. Kind of thing, and you know, I'm not, I'm not carving the net miner, but they got to do better. All right, we'll come back. We'll wrap things up with uh, Corey Heon as we continue here on Sports Talk. Stay with us. We're less than an hour away from Chihuahua's baseball. 600 ESPN El Paso. Back here on Sports Talk as we continue wrapping up the hour with Corey Heon as we uh, continue. Host of the Crash Course Podcast. How many episodes you have so far? Twenty three. Wow. Well, I know that because we just recorded it today. Good for you guys. It's awesome. Yeah, it's I love fun, that. Man. We're just going to go with it. The more you do it, the the easier it becomes. And when we did like episode one, like it was, I was talking like a robot, almost like I was reading a cue card, you know, and trying to do everything right. And there you go. I said to myself, I said, why? Right. You know, like just talk. If you bumble some words, or you, who cares? That's exactly. I was going to remember anyway. No, nah, nobody remembers what we say on the show, so that's exactly. At least right. my podcast, they don't know. No. Yeah. The fact is that they're all archived. Now everybody gets to listen. Yeah, to there them. you can go. I'll go back. I want to listen to the first episode here after the well, show. Watch the one that comes out Thursday. It's going to okay. be a good one. I don't know what kind of mess I got myself into, but it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. Um, let's talk about your daughter, Cameron. She has had a terrific uh, career and uh, now uh, so many opportunities. Uh, catch us up on what she's been doing. Well, you know, obviously she started off hockey here when she was about six or seven. You know, played in our organization and grew up watching the Rhinos play and... Uh, she has, I would say, my personality, type A type thing, and uh, she's extremely physical, um, very, very mean, um, and I mean that in the, the most, the best regard, so to speak. She plays with a Mexican national team. She played with the 18s and the women's. Now she aged out of the 18s. Now it's just the women's, and really every tournament that she goes to with the IHF, she gets suspended, and then she's <laughs> got to go in front of a hearing, and it's crazy. Oh, what she um, gets, what did she get suspended for? Well, the Hitting? last. The last one, she cross-checked a girl right in the face, and it was bad. Like, honestly, so the whistle went. She's, she plays defense, so the whistle went. Goalie covers the puck, and there's no tra- There's no extra stuff going on. Goalie's not being touched, mm-hmm. and the camera, the re- like the actual camera, the replay camera was right behind the net, Yeah, and she comes in and just cross-checks this girl right in the face and sends her flying, and there's a little bit of a scrum, but she never got a penalty. And I'm thinking, I, I was at home. I wasn't able to go, so I'm, I'm watching it. She calls me right after the game. She's like, hey, Dad, did you see that hit? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh no, yes, oh, yes, Cameron, I did. And I said, you're getting suspended. She's like, no, I never even got a penalty. I said, you're, it, this is IHF. They call penalties for going too fast. And sure enough, about an hour later, she's like, hey, Dad, I'm getting suspended. I'm like, well, you hit somebody and? after the whistle. So she actually had a Zoom call with the IHF, and she yeah. had a hearing, and there was 
It wow. was a board. She's sitting in front of a board. Oh, my and God. And she's sitting there. She all dressed up real nice and just innocent. And she's like, after the meeting, she's like, Dad, I don't think I'm getting suspended. I'm like, yeah, you are. The question is how many games. She only got one, which was good. That is good. But so she plays with the national team, and uh, she goes to the Culver Academy. It's a prep school in Indiana, and she plays 19U AAA, uh, which has been a great experience for her, not only for the hockey but for academics too because it's just a, it's a military-based school for the boys, and it's a leadership side for the girls. And it's very structured, and it's very disciplined, and, and just her work ethic is, you know, it helped her to become successful there, and that's, it's been great. And so now she's going to go into her senior year in high school, and, and now it's a matter of what she's going to do. So this Saturday she's flying out to the Naval Academy. They're flying her out there, and she'll spend a week there to see if she likes it. And um, personally, I think she will because she's that type of person. And How's their hockey team? Um, he, it is. It is. I think it's ACHA Division One. But so here's the here's the story. I know where you're going with this, and you play Division One. So she was all banked on Division One. I, I got to play Division One. I, I got to play Division One here. Nobody. Well, that's not necessarily true because there's a lot of D three schools that are good that are better than D one schools. And let's face it, it is. But again, it's the I want to play Division One. So it took me probably, I, I would say, a good year, year and a half to say, Cameron, you need to find a school that suits what you want to do and whatever hockey program they have, they have, you know, versus oh, I'm going to go here when they don't offer you anything, especially what, what she wants. To, she wants to get to journalism and broadcasting, that kind of thing too. Right. So <clears throat> it took She's, about, it took about a year and a half. And now she just, it's finally like, I'm going to look for a school that offers the program that I want. And that's going to be the focus. She needs to intern with us. Next time you get her in El Paso for a lengthy period of time, have her intern like uh, Kay just did in the spring. We'll put her to work, and uh, we'll see if she really wants to keep doing the broadcasting. You know, afterwards. she wants to be on ESPN, one of those reporters, sports reporters. And sure. She speaks four different languages, and she gets her brains from me, unfortunately. You know? <laughs> no, she's all my wife, except my forehead. I don't remember you ever cross-checking somebody in the back uh, after a whistle, though. I don't Never. remember that. Never. I, I was know. Lady Bing Award, man. <laughs> That's the Sportsmanship Award in hockey. Right. Lady Bing. I don't know what they call it in football, or even if there is a award like that in football no. no it's one of the awards you don't want right and i was far from it no but the point is uh cameron sounds like she's got a lot going for her congratulations thank on you that. on that it's exciting and uh it's got to be fun getting a chance to now see uh really the next uh you know the next generation and and know that uh you have a child that has all grown up and uh, has a chance to do exactly what you did and you know it's it's with, with cameron she's she's a yeah, I'm obviously being biased because it's my kid, but really she's such a wonderful person. She's more beautiful on the inside than she is on the outside, and that's what we we try to raise, right, just to be a good person and respect things and work hard and don't take things for granted, and, and she she is an example of all of that. And, you know, my wife does such an amazing job, you know, with, with the morality, the the education, all that. I'm, I'm the hockey guy. Yeah. That's really all I know. And my wife has done a great job with – with raising her with those attributes, and it's been a good tandem. And so far, knock on wood, it's been great. Congratulations! Thanks. Listen, appreciate you being here all hour. Anytime, so much bud. For appreciate time. you uh, having me, and nice to see you guys. Yeah, it's good to see. Good you. Good luck Glenn this Gordon. season, man, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you again sooner than later. That's right. We'll make it. We'll make it a date. I'll, we'll I'll get you sh- on the pod before. Uh, yeah, let's do before it. the season starts. Let's do it. Check out Corey Heon and the Crash Course Podcast. He's already 20-plus episodes in and uh, a lot more still to come. A lot to talk about with there. That'd be good. A lot of stories. A lot of good stories. Man, Too many good stories. Sounds like it. We're going to come back. Final hour next. Sean Merriman's going to lead us off in hour number three as Sports Talk continues. 600 ESPN El Paso. Yes. All right. Welcome back, everybody. We've got about 30 minutes to go as we get you ready for Chihuahua's baseball Oh, excited about our next guest. It's been a great show. And joining us uh, live right now on our Longhorn Distributing Hotline, where all of our guests always appear via the phones, uh, a friend of the program, Sean Merriman, back with us again. We've got a lot to talk about as well. He's got a brand new app available to download. We've got fights this week for Lights Out. Sean, welcome back. And uh, how you been, man? How's everything going? It's, uh, as usual, always busy. <laughs> Uh, and, and then we're in we're fight week, man. And so, uh, you know, it gets pretty tense. And, uh, you know, I get a chance to relax on fight day. But leading up to it, it's, been, it's always crazy. Well, I can imagine. In fact, Lights Out 17 will be happening this weekend. And it's at four days away. 
and uh, just outside of San Diego in uh, Cano Palma, and uh, you've got a big main event as well. In fact, you've got somebody that uh, UFC fans are going to be very familiar with, right? Yeah, yeah. So we got, um, you know, Jordan Bailey's up there as the main event, and then Tommy Aaron. Tommy Aaron actually is our champ, but he just came off of a big win uh, with BK, oh, at BKFC, the Bare Knuckle uh, Fighting, fighting uh, League. So uh, we're glad to have him back as our champion. And Jordan Bailey is, is, a, is a hometown favorite, man. We, we love having this fight. He sold a ton of tickets, got a ton of people coming out. And, again, we'll be live on Lights Out Sports TV. So uh, that's my new free streaming app, a streaming service, uh, tons of sports on there. Got you know World Poker Tour and um, uh, Glory Kickboxing, Chess, World Combat, uh, you name it. We, we got all we got it all on there. So uh, make sure you download if you got Roku or uh, uh, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Lights Out Sports TV. We'll be live on there. That sounds to me, Sean, like a game changer for you. Apps are so important, especially when it comes to consuming sports and consuming products. And now that you've got uh, the brand new app, uh, it, that's got to be a, a big, big deal for you. It's huge. It's huge. And, um, you, you know, the biggest thing for me is is that there's a lot of great sports in there. Like we have Outdoor America coming on this week. We have Speed Vision. So you talk about motorsports, motocross, darts, billiards, rugby just you go start going through all these other sports i created a platform where it's all in, on one streaming service right i mean nothing against these other guys out there but uh you know you don't want to look at 300 plus channels to find your favorite sport so i want to create something with all sports and it's free so if you got any major tv platform out there make sure you guys download lights out sports tv because it'll be there and we'll be live we'll be live on lights out sports tv as well how much are you guys going to lean into having more events, more fights coming up here this summer in particular, knowing that you just launched the free sports TV app, Light, uh, Lights Out Sports, like we're talking about? It, it, it's been great. Actually, um, I'm even looking at throwing some all-amateur shows as well. Uh, Sometimes, you know, and, and nothing against some of the other streaming services I work with, um, but, you know, they don't want amateur shows. But amateurs are just as important as they're trying to make their way to the ranks and turn to pro and hopefully turn pro with us. And you got a lot of amateurs out there, man, that just want a shot, right? Just want the opportunity to, to be seen. Uh, so now we got a platform where we can be able to do it, and, and it's going to be great. So, um, But, it, it, you know, the funnest part about it is, uh, we, like, we got chess on, on the uh, streaming service on Lights Out Sports TV. I wasn't a chess fan, but I am now because they, they, they break down these tournaments, the commentary. So now I'm understanding how to play chess. It's, it's been fun. I'm curious about something. By the way, I just checked out the app. It, you've got almost a five-star rating, which is terrific. Very, very cool. I love the description. Free sports TV by athletes for fans. That's what Lights Out Sports is all about with Sean Merriman, who is the founder and joins us here on the program. We used to make fun years ago and say that when ESPN became the Ocho, they found sports that nobody had seen and for one day – put them on and it was a huge demand for it because you're getting all these sports that were not very commonly found it sounds like you've gone a step further than that you've taken some of those sports and you've made it a permanent part of your lineup not just a one day thing but something that people that want to see it can can consume on a regular basis no no doubt about it and and that was part of 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 my idea right uh, we, we know that the, the rights are going to go for NBA, NFL, NHL. We, we know the Big Five or Big Four, Big Five is going to go to the bigger networks. But, man, there's such a great following for some of these other niche sports that is just underserved, right? Like, you've got to go to YouTube or, or their website. It's very fragmented. So I say, you know what, let me, let me take all of these sports that I know that people watch, I know that people love, that people love the fish and hunt, people love – uh, outdoor sports and motocross and, and, and motor uh, sports and stuff like They love that stuff, but how many places do you got to go to find it? You got to go to five or six places. So let me put it everything in one place and also free. It was, it was very important uh, for, for me to, to make it free for everybody to watch. Sean, I'm switching it over to the NFL. Right now is minicamp period, OTA period, all of that kind of stuff. When you reflect back at your career, was this a time that you looked forward to? Is this a time that was kind of a drag for you? I, I mean, what was this time a year like when you were playing back with the San Diego Chargers? Well, in the, the first couple of years, right, it's always fun because you get in there, uh, you're still a young guy, um, you know, may, may, maybe a new coaching staff, maybe a new team. That you're that you're going into, but once you start getting after year five, six, seven, and eight, it's just one of these things that you know it's more it's more important to be there for for camaraderie, right? Because you're not going to go there, you're not going to learn a whole lot. 
you, you know how to watch film now. You know how to study. You know how to work out during the offseason. So you're going there to strictly show your faith and show these younger guys, like, hey, no one's bigger than, uh, than, than anyone, right? So if I can show up, uh, you know, I'm six, seven, eight plus years in, uh, then you got to come and you got to you, uh, uh, you know, be a part of the program. So I think it's more of a team camaraderie thing as you get older. But the younger guys, this is your first time that you're going to be seen by the, by the coaches. I mean, I know it's not full pad. You're not, maybe not full speed in certain situations. But, man, you, you, this is the first time that you get a chance to, to show them who you are. So it's, it's very important for those young guys to go and, and, and get acclimated and kind of start putting some, uh, some film together, some practice film together. Meanwhile, though, if you're a team like the Jets and you just acquired somebody like Hassan Reddick, who has a year left on his contract, is 29 years of age, you know what you're getting with him. You know you're getting a guy that's going to have 10 sacks, be a disruptor, but he wants a new contract, and he's holding out right now. I mean, just give him what he wants, lock him up for the next three to four or five years, whatever, because you obviously traded for him, figuring he was going to be a long-term solution, not a one-year deal, and the last thing you need is a newcomer not uh, showing up to, uh, to, to to minicamp. Yeah, you know, um, it's unfortunate. I know he hasn't showed up to anything this all season, and you got to understand both sides of the spectrum, right? I mean, I, I get the, the team's mindset in bringing somebody like that in because he's been steady. This guy's been a double-digit sack plus. Uh, uh, pass rusher since he's been in the NFL. On the flip side, you've already proven yourself. Why would you go, go line up under another team with another contract? Because your team just let you get tra- you got traded because they wasn't going to pay you, right? And so if that's the case, if you're the Jets, you have to be prepared to pay this man when he get there. You already know what the situation is. So I, I hate that, man. You you, you kind of put the player in a bad situation. You put the team in a bad situation. You're making him look bad. Guys, he wants a new contract. He deserves a new contract. So if you're not prepared to pay him or start working out a new deal day one, don't bring him there. Right? This is not a guy that's trying to prove himself. He's already proven himself. So if you're not willing to step up to the plate, don't make the trade. Sean Merriman joining us, former NFL uh, great. He's the founder of Lights Out Sports. I know, Michael Plundo, you want to stay in the NFL. You have another question for Sean. Hi, Sean. Michael Plundo here. My question for you is, back in your rookie season, uh, you went up against Peyton Manning of the Colts in Week 15, and you had two sacks on him, and which was a crucial fourth and goal stop. Can you kind of describe to us what that feeling was like? I don't know if you had a chance to hear that, Sean. Do me a favor. Have Michael ask that question on your mic, Adrian, because I feel like, for whatever reason, the the other secondary mics uh, don't work. But it's a good question, Sean. You'll like this. Taking you back uh, to your to uh, your rookie season. So go ahead, Michael. Hi, Sean. Michael Plundo here. My question for you is, back in your rookie year, you went up against Peyton Manning in Week 15 in which you had two sacks, one of which was a crucial stop on fourth and goal. Can you kind of describe to us what that feeling was like for you, as a rookie especially? Yeah, so you you know I, I remember that play um, like it like it was yesterday because uh, that game that game alone I think really put me on the map. Um, even even I, I was already having a pretty good year. Whenever you have those type of games against a guy like Peyton Manning, um, it, it turns a lot of heads, especially a young guy. So I was coming down the line of scrimmage, and you know I figured that they wouldn't let me beat the beat the guy around the corner so easily. And I think that most people are sitting there thinking that Peyton Manning is not going to take off from the ball. Um, but we, we know that they're not going to let me around the corner that easy. So when I came and stopped him uh, and, and jumped in and, and got him from the backside, it, it showed a flash, man, that, um, that not only was I going to you know, have a really bright, bright future, but also it was a pivotal point in that game. So, um, yeah, man, look, I, I always said this. If you can have great games against great players, then that's the way to get mentioned up there with the greats. And I was told that a long time ago um, by you know, my mentor, LeVar Arrington, uh, and I never, I never forgot that. Sean, we've got Cade McConnell here. He's a, a UTEP quarterback. He started half of uh, the season last year. And uh, what's the best advice you have for Cade trying to, uh, as a quarterback, avoid the defense coming right at him and trying to knock him on his rear end? Yeah, you, you know, the biggest thing um, as a quarterback, especially when you're trying to get aggressive, everything's coming at you so fast. I mean, the more you prepare, things slow down tremendously. Um, and you start get, as a quarterback. You have to play against not the not the guys on the field. You have to play, start playing against defensive coordinators. What what are they going to do to you? Start pre planning all the worst possible situations they can. All the uh, the show blitzes, guys stepping up in the A and B gap and going back. You got to start you know really playing against the coordinators, man. Because once you do that, you're so far ahead of the game. We just talked about Peyton Manning. Peyton was the 
the best. I know Tom Brady will go down as the greatest quarterback, but as far as recognizing defenses and calling out what we were going to do, Peyton, there was no one like Peyton. You couldn't come up and show a blitz, blitz back out and bring a safety up and blitz him out. He was calling everything out because he prepared. I got a chance to talk to him about that at the Pro Bowl, and it was, it was all about preparation with him. I appreciate you, Sean. I I agree. Couldn't agree with you more. I mean, knowledge of knowing what's going on in front of you and, you know, being able to confirm with what you're seeing with your eyes and and have something a half a second earlier. That's that's what it's all about right there. So I appreciate you. Sean, Sean, I'll jump in here. I'm going to ask a question today. Christian McCaffrey was uh, on the Madden cover. You were actually somebody who was on the NFL Tour cover way back when, uh, when that uh, video game was released. What was that feeling like when you knew that you were going to be on the cover of a video game like that? Well, yeah, I'll, I'll take it back because I've always, I was always a gamer, right? I, I don't get a chance to play as much now um, to do my schedule or else I, I would be sitting in front of a, a TV 24-7. Um, when I came out of high school and they had NCAA, I remember they didn't have me and my, my size, my frame, my number uh, on the game. So I didn't even want to play the game, right? So that's how much of a, I love video games. So I didn't want to play the game my freshman year because I wasn't on it. Um, then my sophomore year, I was on NCAA. So to get an opportunity to be on the cover of a video game, to be on, first of all, to be on a video game is, is like, man, I get a chance to be myself on this game. It's crazy. To be on the cover is unreal. So when I saw that uh, that Chris McCaffrey was there, I think they couldn't have gone with a better choice. I'm, and I'm nothing against none of the quarterbacks, but it's such a quarterback driven league now, and the quarterback gets so much love, and, and the, the running back position gets underappreciated. I'm glad that Madden did that um, and, and got him the opportunity. Hopefully, hopefully that changes the uh, the perception of running backs and bring their value back up because they are important. But that was that was great to see, man. Are you happy with the uh, current situation in college football, especially with uh, NILs growing the way it has? I, I, I'm happy that the guys are getting paid, but I think that um, because the NCAA didn't get in front of this thing and they didn't want to take care of the players at all or do anything, anything for the players at all, it, it's a bit of a um, – it's a, it's a bit of a wild, wild west, man, and, and they're going to have to step into it because what's, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to have a lot of kids making decisions that, that's not ready to make decisions yet, right? They come in one day, they don't like the coach, or they don't want to work out, or they don't want to go to class, they get yelled at, I'm in the transfer portal. Or, hey, I, I'm not coming here unless you give me $350,000, and these, guys, these kids don't pay out to do anything. And so I think that there's going to, there's going to be, have to be a line drawn at some point. Um, and, and I love for kids to get paid. They should have been getting paid and, and figured that out. But there is going to have to be a point where they're going to have to cap this thing off and have a little bit more organization with it because, yes, you got your top five or top ten recruits in the country that you know they're going to be special players. But you're going to have some guys coming there requesting ridiculous amounts of money without ever stepping on the field and doing anything. And that's where the problem is going to come in at. If you get an opportunity, folks, download the Lights Out Sports TV app. It's Sean Merriman's app. He's been joining us all uh, hour talking about uh, everything uh, going on with Lights Out. Uh, Lights Out 17 this weekend, by the way. It's going to be happening on June the 15th, just outside San Diego. Uh, For people that have never watched one of your Lights Out MMA events, uh, give us a little preview about what fans will expect when they see it on the app here uh, this weekend. Uh, yeah, th- this fight is uh, one of our biggest. Uh, we got Tommy Aaron, who's our champion, fighting George Bailey, the, a hometown favorite in San Diego. We got 14 fights lined up that night. Um, you know, uh, Jared Vendera, who is a former UFC guy, on the co-main event, was going to be massive for us. Uh, he, you know, he has an opportunity to get back to the UFC, so he's going to come and uh, take a couple fights for us. We got a couple guys in this card that I want everybody to come and pay attention to because they may be gone after a fight or two with us with lights out to the UFC. Uh, so 7 p.m. Pacific this Saturday, download the Lights Out Sports TV. So if you guys got any one of the major TV platforms out there, if you got the iPhone, Android, we're on there, Lights Out Sports TV, all the action is there. Good job, Sean. Great to have you back. Keep in touch and uh, looking forward to the big event this weekend. You got it, man. Thanks for having me. Sean Merriman, folks, uh, calling in on our Longhorn Distributing Hotline where all of our guests always appear. We'll come back and uh, we'll get to Tim Haggerty right after Charlie won. One last traffic update, 18 past. The sports talk continues.